Matthew chapter 6. I have a very simple message tonight, and uh, we're going to be Matthew 6. And uh, so, looking for the Lord to speak to us. And uh, Matthew 6, verses 1 through 8, and the thought will be simple, the truths will be simple, and uh, just the way the Lord's leading tonight. It might even be short, but I make no promises on that. And uh, so we'll see. If, uh, if I see you sleep and it just gets longer, I, want to, I don't want you to lose your beauty sleep because you need it. And uh, so, Matthew 6, verse 1, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise you have, uh, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they uh, have their reward." Um, they may have glory of men, verily I seem to thee have the reward. And when thou doest uh, thine alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And uh, when ye pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, uh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, um, and, uh, and that's the key there, and there's an assumption there, okay? It doesn't say if thou prayest, but thou, when thou prayest, um, enter, uh, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pray. Father, thank you for um, the chance to study your word. We pray, Lord, that as you've uh, taken us to... Um, Lord, sometimes you go very deep and sometimes uh, simple. You've given us simplicity, but Lord, sometimes, um, though we might know a truth, we don't live it and we don't do it, and, or we forget it, or it becomes old to us. And Lord, I pray tonight that we would get back to the basics and uh, uh, be taught again what be the first oracles, the principles of God. And uh, we pray that you would speak in a mighty way. Your Holy Spirit would touch our minds and hearts and help us to be faithful and to remember who you are and what you know. Thank you for the truth of the Bible and speak to these good faithful people tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. And verse 8 is where I want to focus. We'll go backward a little bit from there. Um, be ye therefore not like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of uh, before you ask him. A phrase in my mind that was coming as I was just getting a truth is your Father knoweth. Your Father knoweth. You know, it says, um, you know, it says this again in the, this passage and some other passages will read, God knows. And, uh, and he says, because of that truth, um, God says there's some things you should do differently. People are doing some things wrong. For example, in that passage right there, they're chanting over and over, um, thinking that if they say something enough in their chants, that God will hear them. And he says, you don't need to do that. Your father already knows what you need. And you're not going to be heard for your much speaking. Okay, it doesn't work uh, with uh, people. Um, if somebody says the same, same thing over and over to you, uh, do you say, oh, I'm really glad you asked for the 76th time. Now I want to give it to you. Does that work for you or does it bother you? All right, it bothers you, amen? When, when somebody just keeps on saying, you ever have somebody ask you a question, you say no or yes, and they say, I want to ask you a question here. And then you answer them again. Yes. Then they ask you again and again and again and again and again and again. Now, that, at least you have Luke 18, you might want to, you can do that in prayer sometimes in persistence, but not in repetition. Because one word, one time after another, over and over, saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, is not going to get God's attention, is not going to bless God. And he says, your father already knows before you ask what you need. Okay, he already knows that. And your father knows. Going back in the passage a little bit, your father, first of all, knows what you give. 
Okay, verse 1, it says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, let not your right hand know what your, your, le your right hand know what your left hand does, and so forth. It says, look, it says, when you do your alms before men, it says, don't be like the hypocrites who, who give to be seen of men. That is their reward. You do it in secret. And thy father, it says, which seeth in secret, shall reward you openly. Why? Because though you do it secretly and even your hands don't know what the other one's giving, you're in, in, in the symbolism there, of course, is to, it's being private about it and doing it so nobody knows and doing it for God. Why? Because God knows what you give and why you give. And he says, look, not only to know what you give, even if you do it in secret, because I want you to do it in secret, but even though you do it in secret, even though uh, I, I know what you give, but I also know why you give. He says, they do it to be seen of men. They'll receive no reward. That is the reward and people praise them. But you did it in secret and, and you did it to, to please me. I know why you did it, so I'll reward you for it because God knows what you're giving. He knows why you're giving. Okay, that's important because God really knows things. Let's go to Psalm 139. Keep your finger there in Matthew 6. We're going to, be, going to be back there. But Psalm 139, you have to understand that God knows you. He knows what you're like. He knows why you do things. He knows what you're doing. God knowing what you're doing is either a very scary and terrible uh, thing to think about, or it's a wonderful thing to think about. If, if you're doing the right thing, and, 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 and you know God sees it, and he knows the truth, even though your husband, your boss, your friend, your neighbor, your wife, your child, your parent might not see, the, see what you're doing. It might misunderstand things. If God really knows, he is going to reward you. He is going to bless you. Okay? And, and Psalm 139 is, is, is a, one of the beautiful, most beautiful chapters in all the Bible about God knowing us. Verse 1, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. He said, I, I know you. I know what you're thinking. Thou compassest my paths and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before. Thou hast laid thine hand upon me. Beautiful, beautiful things. It says, in, uh, even in the womb, it says, uh, if you go down uh, to verse 13, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's wombs, a uh, womb, uh, womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God made me the way I am. He formed me, as Jeremiah 1 says. Marvelous are all thy works, and that thou knowest right well. My substance is not hid from thee when I was made in secret. And uh, curiously wrought. These are all four terms of an, an artist, a master, a, a craftsman building something. I was wrought. I was curiously wrought and uniquely made, it says. In the lowest part of the earth, thine eyes did behold my substance being yet unperfect. Before I was even formed and developed in the womb, you already knew what I was going to be like. In thy book, all my members were written. I mean, God had a book about you. And he, and he wrote everything you'd be like. Every detail. All my members. God for me, he wrote down the plan. He, 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 he made it beautifully, and he, he wrote it down exactly because he knew us so well. God knows us. He searched us and noticed. He knows us. He forms us. He designed us. He wrote down every part of us. I mean, all my members. The hairs of your head are numbered. Matthew 10 teaches us. It's, it's everything. I mean, think how unique we all are. Your eyebrows, your eyelashes, you might, my thumbs that bend backward because that's what, they, they, you have a higher IQ if you do that by about 20 points, they say. And, uh, and, and he made my, my thumbs, so they bend that way. And then you abnormal people, you can't bend your thumbs backward. But he, he wrote that down, right? He wrote it all down. 
Because God knew you, and he formed you, and he knows everything about you. He knows the way you think. He knows, he knows those of you who have ADD minds, and your minds go everywhere. And he knows those of you who are very serious. And he knows those of you who love to laugh. And he made you so you're funny. And he, he formed you. He knows you. That's why you're so weird. You're unique. Right? You're the way you are. God knows all about you. And, and it says, uh, he says, you all, you know, all the members are written, which in continuance were fa fashioned uh, when as of yet there was none of them. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O Lord. Uh, how great is the sum of them. If I should uh, count them, they are more than a number of the sand. God thinks about you a lot. He knows us. Back in Matthew 6, he knows your thoughts. He knows your motivations. He knows when you're doing the right thing. God knows how and what you give. And he says that there in that passage. He says, look, I know what you're giving. When thou doest thine alms, that an alms may be in, you know, don't let your right hand know what left hand do, and that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. He knows when you're really praying. Uh, verse 5, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as hypocrites are. He says, you know what you should do? Verse 6, when thou prayest. He says, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You know, I, one of the strangest things to me is, is, when you don't really do the things you're supposed to do, but you act like you did them and are expecting the same blessing. That's, that's a strange thing to me. It's like, yes, you might be at work and you might not really be working and your boss might pay you anyway. But if you're not praying, God's not going to say, you know what? I wasn't paying attention. With it. Let's just assume they're praying. Let's just bless them. God doesn't, he doesn't do that. He sees you in secret. When you're praying, he says. He sees that you're really praying. He knows that you're praying. And he will reward you openly. He knows why you're praying. Some people pray to be seen of men, to impress people. And those people have the reward. Why? Because though they were standing there, they may, have prayed, they may have prayed for hours, standing in the street corner, but God says, you're praying to impress people. You're not even thinking about the words. You're just, you're just saying the words. You're just, you're just doing rituals. You're just chanting. You're just being repetitious. You're not talking to me. I'm your father. Talk to me. I, I, I know when you're praying. I know why you're praying. He knew, and so he wanted them to pray properly as in a conversation talking to him. Pray to thy father, which is in secret. Think about that relationship and talk to him. Your, your Abba, Father in heaven. Have that conversation. Talk to him. Don't think you'll be cheer chance and be heard. Don't think praying to impress men and, 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 and what they're hearing and how they're hearing you pray and, and how your language is so good and how you have so many tears. You're praying for them and your father knows that. And you're not going to get anything. Because I know you're praying. I know you. I know what you're doing. I know why you're doing it. So... Since I know you, and I know everything, and I know your thoughts are far off, pray properly. Pray with your heart. Pray in secret. Be real. You don't need anybody to hear your prayers. You don't need anybody to say, are you praying about this? And you be able to say yes. You don't need anybody to say, oh, you're praying so much. It's not, hey, if we combine our thoughts, something good will happen. No, it is you praying to your Father, and your Father in heaven hears you. If you're really talking to him. He wants you to pray. You do need to pray. The chanting won't work, but you do need to pray. James 4.2 says, ye have not because ye ask not. You do need to specifically pray, and you should do it to be heard by God, by your Father, because he knows when you're really praying. Don't be ritualistic. Don't do it to impress people. Pour out your heart before him, the Bible says. Psalm 62, 1 Peter 5.7 God, it says, it cast all your cares care upon him, for he cares for you. Just really talk to him. Yeah. It might be uncomfortable for you if you're not used to pouring out your heart to God, but you'll get used to it. It'll be your greatest refuge of your life. 
It will lower your blood pressure. It will give you a strength you don't have. When you are really praying, God knows you, and your Father knows that. That's what it says in verse 8. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you asked him. He says, I know what you need. You need to ask, but I know what you need. Don't get weird in your prayer. I, I, just ask me, and I know if you need it or not, I'm going to bless you. He also knows when you fast. Matthew 6, verse 16, They wherefore, when ye fast, be not like the hypocrites, are, uh, hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, and that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Same thing. I know why those guys are fasting. I know why they're doing what they're doing. They will not get any more answers because they're fasting, because I know why they're doing it. But I know you. And I know why you're fasting. And I know you're doing it. Or if you're fasting for the wrong reasons, I know that too. I know the truth about the situation. And one of the most comforting things in the world is to know that God knows, God sees. If you're doing the right thing, people may not see. People may not respond properly. But God always will because your Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Because your Father knoweth. Your Father knows what's going on. You do not need to impress men. Impress men because you're fasting. Make them think that you're something great. Say, oh, you're so spiritual, you're fasting. God says, I will see that. I know when you need to pray. I know what you need. I know what your thoughts are. I know your motivation. I know you. Yet he chose to love you. He chose to save you. He chose to... to to work in your life. He chose to still put up with us. He chose to be patient with us, immersible. He chose to go and put us in our situations in life and put us and, 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 and not get, let us get over tempted and all the things that he does specifically tailored to us. He does all that because he knows. He knows. Your father knoweth. He knows you've been praying and haven't got the answer yet. He knows that. And he's, he knows why. And, and he says, I, I know what you need. I know you. I know what you can handle. I know what you're suffering. Tell me about it. I want to talk to you about it. I want, if you and I can spend this time together, I'm going to reward you. If you'll really pray, if you're really fast, if you really give, I know your motivation. Your father knoweth. Humans are not good at this. Sometimes, um, some of us are people who, who, who don't come across right. Okay? My face doesn't always express my heart. I have a poker face. I think I have a grumpy face sometimes. But I'm, I'm not grumpy at all. But that just, that's just the way my face was made. Okay? And, uh, and it's to scare bad people away. Or whatever the reason God made me. He knew what he's doing. But people misunderstand things. I've seen great employees. I've been a great employee before where the boss didn't know I was a great employee because every single time I stopped working for five seconds, he looked. Because I just, bad things happened. I just happened to happen to me at work. That machine broke while I was using it. And I really didn't break it. Just humans don't always understand things. They don't always understand why you do things. They don't notice the good you do. They don't remember it. And if you get too human-based, you'll think because men miss things, men misunderstand, men look at what happened to you and say, that's because this bad thing, like Job, this happened to you because of your sin or whatever. Men don't get things and why things are happening. They certainly didn't catch Jesus and what was happening to him. I remember... Uh, many years ago, I, I was, I am not a big shopper. I'm not really into clothing and fashion that much and, and how things look. And 
a closer for a covering. I'm pretty simple, and uh, you could guess that, right? And uh, and so I just don't I just don't care that much. And uh, but I was going through a store. I don't remember what store it was, and I saw a tie, and I stopped, and I said, "That is an awesome tie." I mean, and, and again. I just don't normally care that much about clothes like like a lot of people and so but I said that is an awesome tie and I'm the least impulsive person in the world I, you can give me a million dollars put me in the middle of a mall for 10 hours I come out with nothing I'm just not impulsive at all but I stopped and bought that tie I got home and I said honey you've got to see this tie which is not me either and uh and so I go and put a dress shirt on. I come back out and I, I, I put this tie and she says, honey, that is a nice, that is a most, uh, that is a best looking tie I've ever seen in my life. Where'd you get that? And I was like, I went and bought it at the store. I had to buy this thing. Isn't this the coolest tie? It was the coolest tie in the world. I wore that tie to church. I had more people coming to me. Pastor, I've never, ever... All the ties I've ever worn in my entire life, I got more compliments on that one tie than every other tie combined. Be walking past her, that tie, where'd you get that thing? That is an awesome, I'm not going to tell them where I got it. I don't want anybody else to have one. And, and everybody's like, they're like, wow, it was amazing. Every, t- every place I went, people are like, that, that tie is awesome. Where'd you get that tie? None of your business. And... I go down to Oregon. There's a pastor's conference. Pastor's like, whoa, Brother Byron, where'd you get that tie? It's none of your business. And, uh, and my pastor walks up. He says, that is the best. My, my pastor says, that's the best looking tie I've ever seen in my life. He said, that, that tie is awesome. He was, he was, he was, he was oogling my tie. Well, my pastor like my tie. He's going to get my tie. So as I was leaving that night, I took my tie, snuck into his office, laid it across his chair. I thought, he better know how much I love him. <laughs> he better know this. Fast forward seven months later. He's at a pastor's conference. He's visiting up here in the pastor's conference in Spanaway. We're at a pastor's luncheon. I'm sitting down there with other pastors, and there's a, it's kind of in a U-shaped horseshoe there. And Brother Mutcher comes in. Guess what he's wearing? The tie. He walks in, and all of a sudden, pastors, Brother Mutcher, that's a sharp tie. Man, that's a sh-. they start. I mean, they start, t- they, just start, they start talking about his tie. His tie. They start talking about his tie. I'm sitting there going, you know, pastor's going to thank me. Somebody goes, in the middle of this, I'm sitting there, watch the whole thing. Somebody goes, Brother Mutcher, where'd you get that tie? And he says, you know, everywhere I go, people talk about this tie. He says, I have no idea. I forgot where I got it. <laughs> I'm still bitter about that, I want you to know. It's been 15 years. Because humans, they don't remember stuff. If I'd have known he wouldn't have appreciated it and known where he got it. I wouldn't have given it to him. Right? Still better about that. But you know, God saw me give that tie. Pastor Mutzer didn't, if he's listening. And, uh, and, but humans, they're not always going to recognize you. Sometimes you're going to do the right thing and somebody's going to treat you wrong. But your father knoweth. Your father knoweth. Sometimes you're going to be doing what God wants you to do, and even a Christian might criticize you. But your Father knoweth. Sometimes the people closest to you, you're going to have done everything right and tell the people it's going to look like you did wrong. But your Father knoweth. And that Father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Your Father knows what's best. Your Father, your father knows when men don't understand we don't need to impress people because God sees. And it's very vain for us to try to impress humans. He also knows your financial needs. Let's go to Matthew 6. Since we're still there, let's stay there. In verse 31, 
We said he knows what you give and why you give. He knows uh, when you're really praying and why you pray. He knows when you're fasting and why you're fasting. But he also knows you have financial and other needs. He knows what you need. And that's a blessing to know that. You talk to him about it, but, but he knows that. Oh, it's so many passages I could read unto you. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? He knows. He knows about that stuff. Verse 31, he says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Yes, you have to do things. You have to pray. You have to seek God's kingdom first. You have to seek his righteousness. But God knows what you're going through. God knows your thoughts. God knows what you need. He knows what you can handle. He knows uh, your heart. He knows your burdens. He knows what situation you're in. He knows you, your, your burden. You don't have an answer. He knows all that. Your father knoweth. He knows. You can cast all your cares upon him. He cares for you. He knows your thoughts afar off. You communicating it with him, we probably never pray if, he, if we didn't, uh, weren't required because we're just selfish creatures a lot of times. But he wants you to spend time in prayer. He wants you to tell him. But he doesn't want you to worry because he says, I know you need these things. I know you're getting overwhelmed. I know your limit. I will stop before we get there. There's no temptation taken to it, such as is common to man. I know you. I know this struggle you have. I know that weak area keeps getting tempted. I know it. Let's pray about it. I'm going to give you an out. I'm going to help you. Your father knows. Your father knows. Your father knows nobody else understands you. He knows that. Your father knows you're lonely. Your father knows your heart's broken. Your father knows you prayed about this and you haven't got an answer yet. He knows. You trust his care. You just keep seeking his kingdom first. You just keep praying in secret. You just keep doing the right thing, whether anybody sees it, because your father knows what you need and he knows what's going on and he is going to reward you if you just keep doing what you should be doing because he knows. Your father knows. He knows. That's it. That's the message. Your Father knoweth. Your Father knoweth. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you know. I thank you that though people may not understand, people may not remember, people may not see the truth, people may have a skewed point of view. Humans don't know the whole story. We have a whole book of Job about that. I thank you that you know. And you're a loving Heavenly Father. And you care. Some people need their financial needs met. And Lord, we just need to come to you as a father and say, Daddy, we need some things. We need to say, Lord, I want this. We need to talk to you, Father. And you will reward us openly. We need to fast when he fasts. Well, you'll see whether anybody else knows. We need to give where you'll see. Because you know our motivations and you're going to reward us. And Lord, may we do these things we should do. May we seek your kingdom first. And not worry about these things. As you said, take no thought. What we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we'll put on. May we do that, Lord, and just give the rest to you. Because our Father knoweth. And you know what's going on. So may we trust in that and just do, keep on doing what we should be doing. In Jesus' name.